that started to take on turn. Okay, guys, we have shared you the schedule for the week seven. We have also shared you with the challenge folder uh, so you can be able to see the challenge button. So let's see if you have some other announcements from the team, from Ten Academy, tutors, careers, training ops. start by you know that on monday so we have to present we have people who already volunteered to present for today but we also pick some random people on the call to present but we will we'll of course start with the volunteers i guess for today we have martin and also Didier. i hope these two people are on the call then after we probably pick two other people on the call so that they can present so, but before we do that, let's hear from um, you guys. How was your weekend? Um, so today I'll be picking random names. Uh, let's start with Chaka Kevin. Then the next person is going to be Stella. Share us how your week was, week six, and also how you spent your weekend so far. And how are you feeling today to start with seven? Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Good morning, Chef. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I hope you can hear me. So, for me, week six was like quite challenging. I was trying to understand different concepts in Web3, and unfortunately, I was not able to to submit some tasks. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't have any brokers, but due to the difficulty of the challenge, I was trying to basically understand the the basics of web3 so my weekend was like uh, i tried to to reach out to my family and to cheat and uh, i'm 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 looking forward to to get some new concept in data engineering within this week thanks all right thanks Shaka. what was some tasks that you were able to submit <clears throat> Uh, like most of the task, I didn't submit the final submission and as well as the GitHub link, but I'm working on it. Um, thanks, Shaka. So sometimes the advice will be, if you probably struggling to meeting deadlines, it's better to yeah to just communicate the reasons why, so that the team can be aware and also some actions can be taken. So I hope that in the future you will consider this because it's also part of the professionalism. Um, because meeting the deadline is good, but also what happens if you, you see that you're not going to make it to the, yeah, to the deadline. So you have to take some quick actions. One of them is to let the team know that you're probably struggling to meeting deadlines. So the team can be aware and also take some quick actions on it like support and also probably say any, any other reaction thanks Yaka, for for sharing and i hope that also this advice is taken by the rest of the team so the next person was stella that also saw the hand from biniam after stella biniam will go on then we will kick off the presentation after i see yabeka is on the call. Hi, Stella. Okay, can... Good morning. Yeah, good morning. I hope that you can hear me. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, so my week six was a bit tough. 
um mostly because i was a working not feeling well but as i'm proud of the progress i made um although i was not able to um achieve uh, uh, some objectives of the project i made progress and um um i was also able to submit all my um my deliverables um looking forward to the new week and learn more on data engineering uh yeah okay during the weekend um i i i found myself actually doing some reading and research but i also took a rest and had a long walk and just think about um my career all right thanks there uh thanks for sharing and glad to see the progress you, you, you made um do you feel like you are like comfortable sharing us with what you did during this course like have like five minutes to take us through what you did in terms of presentation it doesn't need necessarily need to be that you will be ready to share but yeah the team we love to hear from to see what you did and also yeah, in learning from there. Do you feel like you're able? Okay, um, so do you mean like a, a presentation? Yeah. Um, okay, I have, I had not prepared for a presentation, but maybe I can just uh, mention. I was able to do my front end and came up with um, a pretty good um, UI. Um, it was it was my first one. I had to learn a lot from the front end and the back end concepts. Uh, I was also able to connect my front end, my front end to the back end, and uh, I was able to create accounts for new users and view the private keys and public keys on the UI but um I was not able to get to the NFT part. I I struggled with that. Great. So Biniam I saw your hand. I you have something to say to, um, to share with us. Okay, good morning Brett. Uh so yeah, uh, just to give you a review of my week last week. Wow, it was a very challenging week, uh, but uh, it has nothing to do with the concept directly. But uh, the, impl the implementation platform, my, my that means uh, the Windows wasn't working for me at all. I struggled to make it work until like uh, Wednesday. Uh, that's when I realized uh, I need to I needed to tra transition to Linux. So after then, uh, I formatted my PC, uh, reinstalled uh, a new Linux Ubuntu uh, operating system, and uh, and then I also hit another challenge with the uh, operating system because I didn't know uh, a lot about uh, Linux. So. It was very challenging. Uh, basically, I started working on the project like on Friday or something, uh, Friday evening. Uh, I've managed to complete the front end uh, as quickly as possible. And of course, uh, I've also, I've, I've been also studying uh, every code uh, until then. So uh, I've managed to implement some part of it, but uh, not quite presentable. That's why I didn't uh, uh, reply to your message. Uh, Anyways, uh, it was very challenging uh, with regards to the computer, but uh, now I am I have completely transitioned to Linux. I'm hoping nothing similar will occur in the future. So yeah, thank you. Thanks, Binyam. Uh, I can really understand the challenge you faced, and it's not just you only. And uh, of course, as an academy, we also got a lesson from there, and I think. We will do something about that in, in our upcoming uh, batches. And I hope 
that you you are going to be to get used on uh, a new operating system. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's great. <clears throat> Actually, uh, uh, <laughs> I've been asking myself why I haven't uh, transitioned to Linux uh, sooner because uh, it's much easier and simpler to develop uh, projects. So. Yeah, I'm excited for the future. And by the way, I've learned a lot. So next time uh, on the Web3 project, I'm sure uh, I'm going to be able to do all the requirements. Yeah, so thank you. OK, thanks for being there. Yeah, B, are you there? Can we start the presentation? <clears throat> yeah, I'm here. Yeah, we can. Also. OK. So, so far, we have two volunteers, Martin and Nvidia, but as I mentioned, uh, we are, we will pick some random two people uh, extra to just share with us. But let's start with the volunteers, of course. Nvidia and Martin, who is ready to go? Okay, uh, I can proceed. Okay, uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can, we can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. uh, hope you can see my screen. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I just uh, prepared a, a slide just to go over about the overview about the application I've developed. So this is a GSR certification. Uh, let me start from the problem statement. At present, certificates are distributed as simple PDF files without the ability to verify the authenticity, nor can the trainer undertake smart, smart actions with the trainees or their contracts. And with today's available technology, anyone can pretend to be certified by any university or training institution. And this issue has been exacerbated in African countries where verification might take a lengthy period. So the solution proposed or the solution that's implemented is that uh, a solution that's very secure, distributed, eco-friendly blockchain technology to distribute digital certificates. Uh, training organizations admins will create INFT asset or meet them for all trainees and will transfer the ownership to the trainees who completed the program. Uh, finally, by freezing the asset so that the trainee won't be able to transfer the ownership after the trainee or after the admin has transferred that ownership to the trainee. And training organizations will then publicly announce their crypto wallet address for anyone, for any for the public, so that any other institution or organization will be able to verify that the training organization is the one that really transfers that asset or that certificate to the trainee. And if someone can prove that they have received an NFT, Token directly from the address from the address given, then we can conclude that they have completed the program. Uh, the target audience, specifically in the challenge, was for Ten Academy trainees. Ten Academy should be able to use the platform to distribute certificates, but this can be extended to any other organizations, universities, or organization any kind of organizations that want to certify their employees. Uh, tech stacks that I have used for the front end, I have used React.js framework and Bootstrap CSS framework for the CSS part and SAS for CSS compilation. Uh, for the back end, I have been using, I have been first using Python for writing the uh, back end implementation as well as smart contract. But uh, during the middle of the week, I have been facing some kind of challenge when using Python. Uh, I have been trying to use the sandbox given and I have been on the testnet and there has been some lag when using Python and there has been some connection issues so that I migrated to Node.js for the backend and the Node.js is completely implemented using Node.js with Express Framework and for database I used MongoDB, tools and APIs. Uh, for the distributed file system or the, the assets that the admin is going to mint or upload to the blockchain is handled using the Pinatas and a distributed file system and they give you a free API which can store about one gigabytes of data and they have used their API for uh, uploading the assets to the distributed file system and finally link that to the blockchain. I have used pure stack API because I've been uh, getting some lag and it, it hasn't been fast forwarding when using the testnet using the Algorand sandbox. sandbox I've finally decided to move to the pure stack API 
which basically they will give you some kind of uh, Algorand sandbox uh, kind of implementation to directly connect to the testnet or the mainnet. Node mailer to send emails. I will go to the implementation later regarding the node mailer. Testnet dispenser just to get some credit and here you can for deployment. Uh, for future work, uh, I, I haven't fully implemented the smart contract implementation in the deployment of smart contracts. I plan to deploy and work more on smart contracts and full implementation of Algo Signer. The wallet isn't fully implemented and other optional wallets will also be included. And asset overview for the training after the asset has been transferred to the training, uh, we should have an option to uh, overview the asset on the training side and full implementation of automated test pipeline. What I've learned, I've learned to make transactions, meeting an asset using distributed file system and viewing transactions on blockchain, writing and deploying smart contracts, wallet management, and some best practices of blockchain technologies. Best references have been the challenging, the challenge document references. Algorand's documentation has been the best documentation I've seen so far. First the KPA documentation and the DMB digital certification. These are a training organizations that have already started distributing certificates using uh, blockchain technology. And going to the demo part. Uh, okay, this is the landing page of uh, the app. So here uh, there is an option to log in as an admin or trainee. I haven't implemented any kind of authentication for the admin or the trainee because I didn't want to add authentication to this specific application because any trainee uh, without authenticating or logging into the account should be able to receive an asset. But for the admin side, I think for the future, uh, either we should implement some kind of a different domain or uh, provide some kind of authentication. Uh, let me open this on a new tab in the train. Uh, in a new window. So for the admin dashboard, this is what the admin dashboard looks like. The admin dashboard has the functionalities to add a training. First, the, he can add the list of trainings and he has the option to mint an asset. And finally, he will be able to see the list of opt-ins from the training side and he has the option to accept or decline any request from the, uh, from the training of opt-in request. And on the training side, the training will have, there is some short description because I haven't implemented the wallet functionality fully. Uh, he should be able to use the Algo Signer extension, Chrome extension and opt-in for an asset and just provide his public address and asset ID as well as full name and request for the transfer. Uh, so the opt-in, the admin can accept or decline. For if I decline here, this will be, that specific opt-in will be removed from the admin side. Now for the demo, let me just add uh, a string. Let me use my own name. and he will also be able to specify if the student has passed or failed. So the training has been added successfully and we can see the training, the new training list. And now the admin can mint this asset to the blockchain. So what will happen on the back end is uh, that, that specific asset for the training will be first uploaded to the distributed file system and an asset that's using that asset's address, a new, ad, a new uh, any NFT will be uh, uploaded or minted to the blockchain. There is some kind of indicator. I should have only added this to the to this specific training, but this is to be working in the future. And trainees that has failed, uh, the training the admin won't be able to mint those assets if the train has failed the training. might take a bit time because it's uploading an asset. Uh, I think I'm getting a, a flux uh, across here, but
uh, let me just refresh this page and maybe add another training. Uh, for, for for some reason, I'm getting uh, an ear from when. Is, is it, could it could it be the connection to the um, transaction, like like so the test net? Uh, it might be, but uh, uh, maybe I will have to restart my backend deployment. Yeah. If you guys maybe give me time, or yeah, no, don't worry. Present, uh, I think that's that's already good. Okay, but let me just go through the overview, what yeah. will happen once the asset has been uploaded, the training will get an email because we need the asset ID for the training. You should be able to obtain using that asset ID and uh, an email will be sent to the training saying that your asset has, is ready and please mint using this asset ID address. And on the training side, uh, let me show you some of the transactions. The, for the account, the, for the training, he will be able, he should meet using the algo signer because I haven't implemented the wallet and he will search that specific uh, asset using the asset ID and he will mint that. And after minting, any opt-in uh, will be received here on the, on the admin side and the admin can accept that request. And once he accepts that, he will freeze, he will first transfer that asset to the training and finally freeze that specific asset and the train will again receive an email saying that your certificate is ready and please view using a specific URL that has been generated. But I can fix that and get back to you. Yeah. In the other but just can you, can you tell us about just that smart, did, like, so did, are you freezing using a smart contract? No, I'm directly freezing using uh, their, it? yes. Okay. Good. Okay. Yeah. So it's like, great. So let's just see uh get back to us uh, as soon as this is working sure okay martin do you want to go next all right uh, thank you thank you uh you did for the presentation uh i'll also just share my screen let me share my screen Uh, are you able to see my screen? Yes, we are. Okay. Uh, just a moment. All right. So, um, let me just first of all begin uh, from here. So, uh, there's just a short uh, flowchart that uh, I was using uh, for uh, the certificates, just uh, how to uh, assign digital certificates. And that's what I want to take you through in a short period of time, like uh, just one minute. So uh, first of all, you begin, and then uh, the stakeholder signs in or signs up. So there's authentication on the side of the application. Then after that, you gather the details, and then you are able to generate a unique ID uh, and assign it to that particular user. And once you, you assign it to that particular user, you can present the user wallet to that, the user wallet account details. That's the first thing you could do. And then you can go ahead uh, to uh, view uh, the, the, the digital certifications. It depends with which role you are partaking on this particular stage, or you can upload new certificates. And then uh, this is from the side of the admin, upload new certificates to the blockchain as a block into the blockchain network and then issue digital unique id associated to the uh, to the certificate and then it goes all the way up to the end you can uh when you present uh, the details another thing that you could uh, opt that you could do is you could request for other certificates from stakeholders uh that is uh from from stakeholders or consumers then you can check whether they are valid and then uh, once you've been able to validate it, you can display whether it's verified or not. 
and then ask uh, the stakeholder to enter the unique ID details. Uh, that is from the front end, uh, whose certificates they uh, are needed. Then you can send the approval request to the certificate owner, and then you can approve or uh, disapprove, that is accept or reject, and then you can go to issuing of the digital certificate. Then um, how I created the, the, the the D app was for the back end. I used Django REST framework, and for the front end, I used React. And uh, we shall begin by just uh, doing the tests. The tests. The we shall begin by doing the tests on the sandbox because when I tried to connect to the uh, test net or even to connect. Okay, when I tried to connect to the wallet, I was not able to connect to the wallet because uh, there was an issue on the side of my phone. So I wasn't able to do that implementation of the wallet connection. What I did was just, uh, I looked at how the functionality was being uh, developed and added that particular functionality to my application so that in the future, I can be able to also incorporate that particular aspect inside my, uh, inside the, the particular uh, D app. So just uh, quickly the features that uh, are, are in this particular application, number one, uh, it's just uh, getting the particular details of the client. Uh, then uh, the second feature that is also uh, on the on the side, it's the minting. That is uh, when you want to add uh, the particular assets uh, and uh, from the from the from the admin side and send it to the backend so that it can be able to be uh, stored on the IPF, IPFS. That is uh, using Web3 storage from our side. And then uh, the other feature that we have. Uh, is uh, the block just uh, so that you can be able to have uh, you can be able to you can be able to identify uh, different NFTs uh, just at a real time level. I disintegrated that particular functionality and created one for uh, generating the blocks. Then uh, the other the other feature that you have is for donating assets. That is uh, you can be able to donate assets between a trainee to trainee and also between uh staff to train that is staff to train we are looking at uh if the if the trainee has performed well or if the trainee has done maybe something that is excellent uh, they can be donated some certain uh, amount and then also on the other side from the trainee if maybe another trainee has come through and helped them in a particular point they can also be uh donated for some particular amounts and uh yeah that's on that particular part of the, the donation of the assets then uh, there is the requesting of the assets from the side of the trainee. That is, uh, once it's been already been with once it's a, it has already been minted, you can be able to uh, request so that you can be able to check whether from the staff they have accepted or they have rejected. Then uh, we go ahead to the next point. That is the opting in. That is opting in when a trainee wants to opt in to, to that particular uh, uh, asset. And then uh, there is the the last functionality which is uh, accepting or rejecting the request that comes from the uh, trainee uh, so that's it on uh, the features that i have for that particular application uh, for that particular d app and what i want to take you through now is how it uh, works so just let me open allow me to log out just a minute so when you sign up, uh, the way I said in the very moment, you can sign up as a staff or a trainee or an admin. Uh, these two different, these three different roles, uh, they play different uh, particular perspectives when it comes to uh, the particular features that are in this particular D app. And then uh, you can connect to the Algorand wallet, just uh, the functionality that I was saying I, I was adding so that when I will implement the wallet connection together with uh, the mainnet, I'll be able to uh, carry out these particular transactions uh, just directly in real time when somebody just connects to the wallet and you can figure out how it can be, it can be able to uh, have that pipeline all the way from the authentication up to the end of uh, getting the particular assets. So that's the first uh, part. Uh, so let's just, uh, the, there, 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 there are three types of sign up. So I do, I already signed up because uh, so that you can be able to save on time. So I'll start first of all uh, with uh, signing up as a trainee, a trainee that was already in the system. This is Martin. I mean, this this is a staff uh, that was already in the system. I've already put the password, so I'll just uh, log in. Uh, so when you log in, 
immediately are able to see uh, currently he this particular uh, uh, staff uh, was handling uh, a particular was handling a particular trainee called Alphonse and it shows a list of trainees uh, together with their addresses uh, based on what they are currently uh, the, the stage and the level which they are in so and also the asset URL the asset URL is the link to that particular uh, certificate that which they have uh, uploaded on web3 storage so uh, the first thing I implemented the the uploading of the web from the web storage directly uh, but uh, unfortunately when I try to implement it again there's a way it uh, loads forever so I I just the first thing that you have to do is upload a file. Let me just upload a file quickly uh, in Web3 Switch. Okay, so uh, let's take up uh, a particular file. Uh, we can take up, like, for example, uh, uh, we can take up this upflow.png. So it will load. Uh, it will load. It will just take a very short period of time and it will be inside uh, what i really need is that particular link so this in the future i want to just make it to be synchronized in a, in a particular fashion that is uh, very smooth on the side of the on the side of the client that is on the side of the user interface so uh should be completed uh, just a moment, I mean, my machine has hung. Okay. I just don't let me think this. I don't know why the, the machine has hung for some particular reason, the Chrome. But uh, we can we can use let's let's just use a uh, Firefox. So let me just uh, log in. Okay, so uh, the very first thing is uh, you can meet a particular entity of a particular trainee. So the first thing that you will do is uh, you will uh, provide the particular uh, requirements. That is, you'll first of all begin by the amount. You'll just, uh, I'll put in uh, one algo for this particular because uh, that is the unit that you're using for this particular asset. And then the asset unit name, I'll just call it a 10, 10 SC, and then uh, the just a moment. Uh, I'll call it ten academy uh, academy certificate, and then uh, the person who I'm awarding, uh, I need to award uh, somebody else. So I'll just put. Uh, let me say Jerry. You can put in Jerry. This is somebody I'll just sign up right now, and uh, the particular. Let me just reuse this particular. Uh, Let's use this particular. Just a moment. Okay, so uh, first of all, uh, sorry, I had forgotten to, because I was using actually right now currently I'm using the the sandbox. So the first thing that I I first of all do is to generate uh, an address that I'll be able to use to uniquely identify myself, as you had said in a particular uh, point. If you are using, if if it happens that we were using actually a uh, 
if it happens that we were using, we were connecting to the wallet, we would have been able to just successfully uh, do this without really going through all this, but uh, this is something that I will be able to integrate uh, with the time. So we can now go ahead and now mint this moment. Uh, let me just, just, let me use this uh, so that we can be able to, I can be able to see the payload that was Oh, uh, sorry, I have realized the reason why that was the case was because of the way I was doing my, it was because of the way I was doing my storage of the cash. Uh, sorry about that. So this is the first certificate that I've, I've created. And for the first certificate that I've created, uh, the person who is uh, supposed to be awarded is Jerry. So we'll go, we'll just log out and then uh, just a moment. And then I'll have to quickly just sign up Jere. Just a moment, sorry. Yeah, so now I'm signed in as Jere, and uh, just let me uh, let me open this so that I can keep track. Uh, so uh, once I'm signed in as Jere, so again, the first thing that I'll do is uh, I'll create my own particular credentials, and this is what I'll be using uh, for my particular case. Uh, so if we realize that Jere, there is no certificate that has been awarded for that particular person, and what we want to do is to award a certificate to Jere. So the way I had created it was that uh, these blocks, uh, because of just sec uh, security purposes, I had created that the admin is the one who, uh, just let me come to the admin. This is now a different person. The admin is the one who uh, begins the transaction. So he'll just uh, start the particular transaction by uh, setting by putting the NFT uh, ID that is an unfungible token. Uh, for us, we're using that because uh, we are using the local host at this particular point in time. So uh, 10 is for how long this particular certificate should be available so that uh, if it's not picked up, uh, it can uh, again just uh, go back to uh, the particular uh, entity. So 30, uh, it's 1 million. That's in terms of micro algos, in terms of micro -algo, algos, and then 1, then uh, the address uh, that you're going to put in for this particular um, over here. Let me, oh, sorry. That is, uh, this is for the, let me just get. Yeah, so just a moment, it's taking some bit of time. Just a moment, It's it just takes a bit of time, but uh, it will be done. Yeah, so it's completed. It just shows your pop-up uh, that it's successfully generated. Uh, so uh, I'll log out and come in as uh, JRS so that I can be able to claim that particular certificate and I'll log in. And I'll come in uh, over here because I've seen that now it has a block because the, the previous one, it wasn't yet having a block. That means that uh, the admin had not yet uh, been put in that particular process. So uh, we'll put in the address. The address that I'll put in over here is my particular address. So I can let me just generate one for quick purposes.
So the block uh, of, for this particular one is 1661. And then the NFT is 1660. So uh, I'll come and request. So just a moment. It also takes, the, the, the reason why I, I tried to figure out whether I could be able to do it without uh, those particular time periods, just the, but uh, it, it keeps on giving error. So you have to sleep. You have to like give it time for it. You have to wait for the transaction to complete. Then you can be able to continue. Yeah, so it's completed. So it's successfully requested for the asset. So uh, for this particular, for this particular, right now, uh, he cannot particularly be able to see the certificate, his certificate being generated, but uh, for it, for him to be able to view the particular certificate, the user, let me now get in as a, a trainee, as a staff, sorry. And uh, I need to accept that particular request. So uh, to accept that particular request, I'll come in and I'll put uh, this particular uh, NFT and also the particular block. So I'll come and put in the NFT was, I just let me confirm the NFT was 1660 and the block was 1661. So I'll accept just a moment. So it's it's actually released. So when uh, as it has been released, now if I come in as the trainee, um, if I come in as the trainee, I'm able to see my particular certificate, which is over here, uh, this one, uh, NFT, uh, Jere, blah blah blah. So if I want to access the particular certificate, I'll just come over here. Uh, yeah, and I am able to access the particular certificate. This is just an example. It's not uh, as any like a value, like any certificate, but it's just an example. Uh, so that's just how uh, the uh, the whole process goes around from uh, generating a certificate that uh, can be used by uh, the, from generating a certificate that the trainee can be able to access. Yeah, that's uh, it. That's all from my side. Great, thanks, Martin. Um, even if I didn't understand by the amount, like you were the reserve amount, was that what is that number? Uh, it, it's the uh, like the amount of algos. What happens over here? Let me just uh, explain. Uh, when uh, the way I was planning, I was thinking of implementing it on my mind was like this: that immediately, uh, ten academy trainee begins to. Uh, just from the moment they get into into working with the moment they get into ten academy, it begins from that particular time uh, to check out like to view how many uh, algos that particular person has that has been awarded by uh, ten academy. Then uh, as they continue as they continue as they continue with their progress, as they perform better, the amount of points that they'll have for this particular uh, for this particular account will increase so it continues increasing it continues increasing until uh it that, reaches is, a... that number is an algo that uh 10 academy or whoever is donating or yeah yeah okay 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 great thanks anyone has question yeah you did yeah uh not a question <laughs> just okay yeah, but yeah, before that, like anyone has a question to Martin and uh, because you did, I will be back. So we'll have a chance. You will have a chance to ask anyone has a question. You know, when you don't ask what I'm interpreting is that you absolutely understand whatever goes on. So that means you will be able to explain that back to your friends. And which means I will ask randomly someone to explain what Martin has just asked or demonstrated. Okay, so then I will randomly call names. Uh, Doug Maui, can you please tell us, like just rephrase for us, like summarize what Martin has explained, like what does his application do?
Um, good, yeah, you can write it. Okay, Nardos, in the meantime, can you help us explain just what went on? Like, you know, if you were to summarize it in 30 seconds or one minute to a friend. Um, so, um, from my understanding, yeah. uh, I think Martin started with a transaction from the staff side. And um, so, a staff generates the NFTs and mints and um, and then uploads it. So, he hasn't integrated the wallet concept yet. So, um, uh, yeah, that's I I didn't get much. I guess this is. But what what kind of question do you have now? Like just now that you are trying to explain it, and then you, okay, you saw. He, the, yeah. Okay. When he did the last transfer, things I did not understand much part of it. I was gonna ask him on Slack, but I guess I can. Yeah. Can if he can. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Uh, I, if he can demonstrate it again, maybe that would be great. If okay. that's not the last yeah. part of it. I did not get the no, actual specifically from the implementation part. sites. When he uh, up mints and uploaded the NFT, uh, I haven't uh, myself implemented on on my project, so that's something I I did not understand much yet. So the one he, when he transferred the um, the amount he entered, and I did not understand the last part. Okay, Martin, can you just without maybe even demonstrating? Can you explain that part? What what you have done, just uh, briefly, because we are running. Yeah. Okay, uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Uh, so from the from the NFT now, uh, just creating the NFT all the way up to minting it. Uh, so what happens is that you have a particular asset, and that particular asset you want to uniquely identify that particular asset and sign like um, digitally sign it so that you can protect it, uh, and the IP, if it, the IPFS that uh, we're using with 3 storage is just a place where we store any assets, like for example, fi like images, uh, files, documents, videos, and all those types of any type of uh, document that you can you can think of, uh, even zip even zip folders. I, I checked you can also implement zip folders and all that. So once you upload your particular, um, you upload your particular asset in the web three dot storage then that means you've been able to successfully put it into the ipfs but now for you to remove it somebody has to request for it like somebody has to request you like that was why you that was i had a button called a request uh, accept request that is the trainee requests for that particular uh, asset to be released and then once i accept the request to be released and the the transactions uh, based on a certain threshold like what uh, there's a certain threshold that I'm, I'm i'm using to test to see whether that particular trainee has met that particular threshold then i'll release that particular asset and award them a certificate yep great okay thanks i'm not sure if that answers your question or not Nados, but yeah go on and um, also ask in slack if you have questions yeah then let's proceed uh, I have one more question. Yeah. So when you enter the NFT ID, do we do that manually? Uh, maybe that part? Uh, that's because I haven't yet connected the wallet, but uh, when you oh, okay. connect the wallet, you'll be able to just automatically do all those things. Oh, okay. I understand. Thanks. Great. Thanks. I'm sure like if everyone else, like if I ask like that and you start explaining, you would realize some of the questions and that's why i'm saying sometimes um you know it's good to ask okay Edidia, why don't you proceed okay i need to see my screen yeah we can okay so the problem was i actually i pushed to heroku in the morning and accidentally replaced the assets description to the asset name and the assets name was too long for the asset to be minted and i hope uh, i have fixed that now
will add the chain. Okay, so now I will mint this chain is asset. So what will happen here is the assets address, the assets JSON data, as well as the image or the certificate will be minted, not minted, but uploaded to IPFS using uh, Pinata's API. And now this has been minted. And now when I go to the training site, I should receive an email uh, on my, Yes, so I have an, an email saying that here is your certificate asset ID and my asset ID will be also given here. And I will use this asset ID to opt in for that specific address. And for the training side, I only have some certificates that I've been trying in the morning, but I will mint, I will opt in for that specific asset. And yes, it's HID STEN Academy certificate and I'll opt in for that specific asset and I will use my password. and it, it has been sent. And now I will just use my name and inform the, the admin that I have minted uh, for the asset. I will use my public address of the train. And that asset ID that has been emailed to me. And I will request for transfer and the request has been sent to the admin. And finally, if I go to the admin page and refresh my account, I can see that there has been a renew request. I can act, I either accept so or decline. If I ask you this, here, so here it's just a wave two request, right? The request There's is no... a wave two request because okay. I haven't implemented the uh, wallet integration. I have been trying to implement and the pop-up or the, the pop-up of the algo signer has been, uh, was coming, but on the point okay. that it's signing okay. the transaction. No, no, just, it's just, much more, yes. just wanted to make it clear. Okay, go on. Sure. And the uh, admin can finally accept that request. And when he's accepting that request, the process that will happen in the background or on the back end is the asset will be transferred to the training. And finally, uh, he will freeze that asset so that the training won't be able to transfer that asset to anyone. So when does, okay, so when does the opt-in like happen then just without Web3 code? Because a Web3 is a Web3 transaction. Uh, so, sorry? So when a trainee obtains, it is a Web3 transaction. Did he do that? Did you show that that he obtain by sending a zero value transaction? Uh, he, he was basically opting in using the algo signer extension itself. Ah, okay. okay. And uh, okay, if I sh I think it does, it has been transferred now. That's why it's one now because it's, no, no, on that okay, so yes. You did, you did using the algo signer, you did opt in. The opt-in part was implemented using the algo signer. Fantastic. Okay. Because okay. I didn't want to use the secret key. I didn't want to request the secret key of the trainee. He has to. He shouldn't share that secret key with anyone, and he, sh he should be able to use the application without exposing the secret key or any other yeah, private no, stuff. I, I just was yeah. a question. Yeah, great. Okay. No, yeah, okay. Yeah. So okay. that now the. Uh, the list has been removed and he should get an, another email saying that your digital certificate is ready and to visit, he should be able to go to this specific address. But in the future, what I plan is there is a section called trainees profile and his certification dashboard so that once an asset has been transferred, he should be able to see that specific asset. So if you also go now to the training to the trainees address, there are two assets. The first one is something that I did in the morning, but this is the asset that has been minted, finally transferred to the trainee, and it's his 10 academy certificate with a specific asset ID. Now, if I go to the link that has been sent, anyone can verify that so that Authentication can be just in the creator's address or public address so that this basic organization or Ten Academy has transferred this to the training. And the URL is in the FFS, the asset has been in the FFS file storage, and can go and have a look on the from this free file system. Uh, 
Okay, it's taking some time. I think it's yes. Just so the this is the metadata. The description is the one that's being uploaded. Two files are being uploaded to the IPFS. The first one is the asset itself. And the second one is the description or the metadata about the asset. Here, the name is it, uh, or the description is the certificate. And the image is in a specific Pinata's uh, address. And if I go and paste that, I should be able to see some kind of generic certificate, generic in a way that it doesn't contain the name of the trainee, but just a certificate that's generic. Maybe in the future, I saw that some articles that they are using some kind of image data that's unique for everyone based on it, some specific graphic design. Uh, and I don't think my internet is good today uh, if, yeah. if it's taking some time to load the certificate. But this should, this all should be on the trainees platform here in the trainees profile. This certificate or this asset should up, uh, should appear once the asset has been transferred to the train beyond emailing the train. Great. I mean, this is well done. So. Anyone has question as well? Just um, to you, Didia. So think of the process and then come up with something that you haven't understood or you didn't, you kind of struggled to implement. And now is a good chance, like, how did you do that? How, you know, or how does that happen, this or that? Okay, otherwise, then I'm going to again. Uh, so, Iridia, have you finished or do you want to? Yes, yes. Okay. I, I'm done. Okay. So, Samuel, Samuel Alana, just give, tell us briefly what Iridia managed to do. I mean, as if like you are telling your friend, just a brief summary. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Good morning. Uh, from my understanding, uh, first uh, a training or a training a trainer or a training will log in. For now, it's just anyone can log in, in any section. So after the login, if it's the admin or the trainer, it will add a trainee. After it adds, it will uh, mint the space trainer. So that would be sent to an email for to the trainees after accepting the email it will opt in using the algo sign or chrome extension after it's uh, uh, opt in uh, the training will uh, able to trainer will able to pass or accept or uh, reject the uh, basic training says uh, opt in a trans tra transaction i guess so after that uh it will be sent to the trainees the certification and other i guess for my understanding okay great and everything is clear you don't have any question uh not exactly but uh, i'm like yeah. uh, still uh, so, fully so the not exactly so the not exactly is a good point so what is it that you know what is it it doesn't matter whether it's a good question, whether it's phrased well, phrased question, just try to ask that, the, no, like, the one that is uncertain for you. To be certain, it was like, I'm new to web development, so all I think of my I, Can we just say, can we just say, everybody's new, so forget about that I am new to something. It's like, we don't expect you. So, I mean, again, after this, you know, one has to tell a joke if they say, I am new to Web3, I am new to new develop web development, I am new to this. You're new, we know. And therefore, you know, no need to repeat it. Okay, so it's said, everybody who says after this, I am new to something, then, I mean, yes, you know, you can say it in a, in a form of to say, you know, as a connector, but not as an excuse. So if anyone uses it as an excuse, then we would say that you have to tell a joke, okay? So you're new, we know. It's just that's why you, you can ask questions, though. you know. 
Okay, but particularly, I didn't know what question to ask. That's why I'll, uh, okay. I'll get back to him on if I no, know. No, uh, good, 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 good. Okay, so you described it well. Is it everything comprehended, like in terms of, like, in, if you have, if you, if I ask you to draw the flow between a trainee and an admin, so it seems you described it well. Is that everything clear in that connection? Uh, for me, uh, like the opt-in, so uh, a trainer will add like uh, the trainee after he added it, like opt-in on what purpose, the, just say after he adds, does he opt-in the trainee or? Yeah, that's, that's a good after. question. So let, let's ask that one. What is actually that opt-in? What does, what does it do in the background? Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. Can that be a good question? Part of, yeah, that's what I did okay. in part So then, uh, great, you got the question. That's what I, so what is in the background? Just tell me, you could say, Edidia, please just explain to me what is going on when someone opts in in the background, because we we keep saying opt-in. So, Edidia, you have... Uh, yes, okay, experience. sure. Uh, so I think it's different from different blockchain technologies, from one blockchain technology to another, but in specifically in Algorand's blockchain implementation, they have added a feature to opt in for an asset before someone can transfer you <clears throat> a specific asset. Uh, in our case, a trainee or an admin, no, the admin will be able to transfer you the certificate once you have completed the program, but he cannot transfer this asset based on Algorand's implementations unless you haven't opted in for that asset. That's because some kind of charge will be incurred to you because anyone can come and transfer some assets to you, even if you don't want that specific asset. So uh, we don't want anyone to send us any kind of assets that we don't want and uh, uh, incur or increase some charges for us. So what Algorand did was the user or the, the person that's going to accept that specific asset should opt in or request for that specific asset using that asset's ID that has been minted. And once you opt in or request for that asset, the trainer or the admin can transfer that asset to the trainer. Is that clear somewhere? You can keep asking the part that's not clear. So the particular opt-in, the that word, what is the specific uh, meaning? Like, if uh, clear. Uh, okay. The, Opting in means requesting for specific asset or for specific certificate that has been minted. Or in other words, the trainee will be requesting for the trainer uh, in English, just give me that asset because I've completed the training. And finally, the trainer should be able to accept that specific opt-in. The yeah. trainer won't be able to send that asset unless the trainee opted in for that specific asset. Using yeah. the asset ID. Just, just to add there somewhere, in particular, what it really means is that, so if you are now to, to do it on a command line, then there is an operation that basically to the blockchain, just the same as like pay is one operation, right? Pay means like, okay, I have this account, from this account, I pay this amount of algo or this amount of crypto to another account, right? So that's clear. So you would ask it with just a goal in an Algorand, Algorand goal pay. Now, opt-in is exactly the same as pay. And the only difference is that opt-in, the value you are transferring is zero. You are saying like transfer a zero account, a zero amount uh, asset transaction to the person, to the person that I'm opting in. And that internally is interpreted as I am willing to accept. You see, like it's it's actually, it's a type of operation, it's a transaction that you do with zero value. And it's because in its own operation, so it's, it's not like overloaded, it's called opt-in operation. Then you will not be charged for that. You will only, it will only be interpreted with that operation. It's an interpretation that, okay, now the other person is allowed to send you that, that asset. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. 
great awesome i think you know these are again asked like because we don't have like we don't have time but all of these elements um um is is really interesting and and I, in particular i want to focus one thing because most of you probably know really great work uh Yeridia and martin congratulations i'm sure some of you have already done that uh, maybe that you will tell us over time um, so there is a kind of question. I understand what the project asks and how that should flow. My problem is implementation. Regard stack, which is something that I can work uh, given more time. Great. Uh, good to know. Matilda, uh, what is the opt-in type the admin receive when train is requested? It? Um, that is Rahmet. Uh, I mean, is the opt-in received by the admin a number of a number or a phrase? So um yeah, maybe you did yeah, or Martin. What do you receive when 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 you have a you know an opt-in transaction? Mm, I, I'm not exactly sure, but I don't think there is anything that is received by the trainer. That's why I implemented the extra feature to show the opt-ins list by so that by filling a form, but he will just be able to transfer that specific asset once yeah. the training so, so it is it is a transaction so they must receive something so definitely in the blockchain in their local space they must receive something must be maybe not written maybe yeah. maybe not yeah martin yeah also me that's uh from my side that's uh the same way i also implemented when uh, they have completed the transaction now they on the side of the admin they release they release uh no one, no no no, no, no on, the the admin, on the trainee side when they opt yeah once, in. once once the trainee has opted in into that particular asset the the the, the, the trainee has uh, released then they are able to now uh i, I don't uh, understand the terminology released i mean it's opt-in is just an operation a transaction so they basically exchange it they send a message in a yeah, blockchain they, language they send a message and now you know every transaction changes the state so this i know opt-in is a zero value transaction yeah which means it may not change a state except it, it it must because it must allow the yeah. administrator to write or to say this which means actually it must have changed the state so now the question is what state or what thing is written in the local space in the account space of uh, the staff so is this a message called is it a message you know a, a, a space that's created or is it just some kind of like one account is added in a list in an array so what is it that is that allows or that tells the blockchain to know that this account has a right to send to the other account so that's Rehmet's question is that what does what happens at the state or i mean what happens when an opt-in transaction finishes It's a good question, Remit. I imagine it definitely writes something uh, permanently as a variable in the account. So, and one may, it, one could be, like, there are two ways that it could do. One is in its own space, in the, for example, the trainee in its own account space, it adds the, basically, the account holder or the NFT uh, ID as I'm create, you can create for, for this account or for this NFT ID, you know, a value can be written. So you basically open an empty uh, space for it to be written or for, for basically to be transferred. Because NFTs are owned just like anything, like in a dictionary in Python. So you are basically adding assets. One of the assets is algo, and then you have what is called assets uh standard assets which are in a dictionary so basically for each it's a list um, and so you basically are incrementing that list so it must be writing some kind of empty space for that so but i i think we can and i'll look and i i also would write that just exactly what happens at the blockchain level great 
And I, I will have one more question to anyone, including Martini, Didia, and other. So have you looked, so how, what is the difference between writing a smart contract and a Python code that basically would say, um, I, let's say you write just something that will plot uh, a linear file, you know, you generate X, you generate, uh, you, you generate Y by squaring X, X, Y is equal to X squared, and then you plot it. So you write a function like that versus you now are writing that as a smart contract to saying like, if somebody gives you this, you know, generate uh, X, is, X squared. So how, what are the differences between writing these two? So what have you understood? In, in terms of smart contract writing, Binium. Okay, uh, logic wise, uh, there isn't much difference. Uh, that means uh, the code is going to be the same. Uh, except, of course, uh, the smart contract, if it's on Algorand, it's going to be implemented using uh, TIL, uh, the language TIL. Uh, and uh, on a higher level, it, can be, it could be implemented using the PyTIL. Uh, library uh, so but uh, regarding deployments there is a difference that means uh, if we write uh, python code it will probably be run on uh, a web to kind of backend uh, uh, infrastructure that means uh, centralized uh, data resource uh, server uh, but when it comes to the uh, smart contracts it needs to be it, it will be deployed on the blockchain so it will be distributed over all the nodes in the blockchain and uh, uh, it can be, you can see it as uh, another uh, account uh, that can accept a transaction, uh, process a transaction and uh, generate a, a result. Uh, so yeah, the result would be yes or a no result. So basically uh, the difference comes from how it's uh, written. Yeah, but, but I think you're very glossing it over. I mean, at the end, I was about to say that's not correct, but then at the end, you uh, you kind of come back to it. Uh, like your mic is really not best. Okay. Um, so what? Uh, okay, maybe can you mute? Okay. So what does that mean in the way that's written? Of course, that's all. The you know that that basically is the case it is not the same absolutely you will not try it with the same mental my picture the two so my question is exactly how do you think about writing y is equal to x square as a smart contract versus y is equal to x square in python interpreter uh I'm not exactly sure uh, uh, if I get it, but uh, basically uh, the way you write uh, smart contracts is event driven. That means uh, the, the, you write uh, a block of code to handle uh, different kinds of transactions. Uh, but would you be able to write y is equal to x squared? Yes, definitely. Okay. Uh, I think that's not correct. So let's just, let's see if anyone else can help us. Anyone who looked at how you write smart contracts, it could be actually in um, Algorand, but others, but let's talk about Algorand, Teal or Python. How would you be going and writing y is equal to x square? What are the main differences if you were to write it, to, to write it for a Python interpreter or an Algorand virtual machine? Okay, um, I think in the Algorand virtual machine, you are able to write till like the till the till the the assembly code directly into like i think it's 
it, it, it sort of makes it faster. Why is equals to x squared makes it faster? Uh, what okay, my my opinion on this side is that uh, on the AVM, it's much more faster to run y is equals to x squared as compared to the Python interpreter. But I, I think that's not my question. I think it, there is a, a simple conceptual big difference. What is Python interpreter and what's a virtual machine that you're writing? So you, you mentioned again another important part that you said um, like a, a kind of an assembly, an assembly type language. So that's that's a good indicator now. So one can build on top of that as well. So what does that mean? Well, what is an assembly language in a way that how do you write an assembly language versus a Python interpreter? Uh, assembly language is written in form of symbols which are known to that particular uh, machine. So, or that particular machine. So like for, for Python, the assembly code which is written, uh, the, the, the assembly code that is in inside any computer just uh, will be compiled and then it will be now uh, somebody can be able to interact with it through uh, the compiler or the interpreter. So, but on this other side, the 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 the, the, the one for Algorand, uh, the assembly code is in symbols, and then when you build it and compile it, you are just compiling it using the PyTIL. Yeah, I mean, uh, you are compiling it using the 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 TIL compiler. Sorry, the TIL compiler, and then you are able to interact. I, I think learn. again, again, really, we are we are halfway now. So yes, in assembly, you write with code, with a certain operational code. So that's a good one. So anyone can add on what is left. How would you write y is equal to x square? Uh, can I can I add? Yeah. Uh, so f first of all, uh, you'll just uh, allocate, uh, create some space, create some space for the x and then create some, okay, you'll create space for two uh, variables. Then uh, you will read, uh, you will read from the input from, you'll, you'll, you'll read the input from that particular, uh, wherever, wherever the, 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 the source of the X is going to come in and wherever the Y is going to come in from, then now you do the operation, the operation in it, just, you just combine the two, you form an expression and then uh, you are able to compile it here. Yeah. Great, I think that's almost now 75 to 90. Can someone summarize? Or can someone actually ask question? Before it's revealed or you know, whatever, are you following up? If you're not following up, yeah, Henok? Uh, hello? Hello. Hello. Uh, am I we, can, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, I know that there are um, two main functions we need to implement the uh, smart contract the approval function, the, the approval program, and the one that does the cleanup uh, stuff. So in the approval, there are some conditions that we can specify. This is what I understood uh, from reading the demo code that's in the developer portal. So for uh, implementing the x square function, I'm thinking that we can have that logic uh, inside the conditions. For example, when uh, when, when a transaction that, that uh, activates the smart contract is sent to the blockchain, and then that would uh, run the logic for the for the x square function inside yeah. uh, that's located in the approval program great i think that's that also adds a very good ant like so that makes it 95 percent so uh, what i want is um yeah so gazine also added uh, which is Good. So uh, we write with a predetermined condition that we are unable to alter it. In the case of Python, we can change it uh, and updates. 
it's kind of correct in a way that the operations are limited so and you have to use those operations and then so i think you know basically um that almost everything is said martin has said covered most of it especially with the assembly kind of uh, parallelism because this is an instruction language you know when you are writing to a computer like python has added so many layers the python interpretation actually is interpreted it now will be compiled into some form of c and then that is kind of then into uh, compiled in terms of like machine instruction and the machine instruction then finally does and if you have taken computer science kind of uh, course you would know that machine instructions go in a certain way you know there are registrars and kind of does this and does that right so the important element is that you have hipare and then also what is called a stack so in a stack i think most of you who knows javascript javascript runs in a stack right so all of the instructions goes in a stack and then just kind of uh, executed so if you really want to understand and want to write uh, a good well-behaving smart contract you cannot you must write it in that form of there is an instruction and the instructions have a very very predefined uh, sets right so there is the txa and you know uh, instructions there are the so some of them are about variables so for example the txa is the space uh, readable only uh, that contains the current transaction request right which which has a certain field and then you have also an account space so that means basically in that space you can add different accounts that the smart contract would be acting on there are arguments that you would be able to write and then there are also asset spaces asset spaces are the number of other asset assets or assets the uh, references that this smart contract is allowed now to to kind of act on or you know see or check or read um, and then uh, as well as just other smart contract uh, accounts so these are all different variables that it, it has access and it it asks like and then there is also the put and the set uh, the put and the gate kind of space getter or space setter or like a state changer and then exactly because it's in a stack, it's a stack operation, just like any CPU request, you know, how, how things are happening in the CPU, you basically are writing one condition at a time, or you, you basically put it in a stack and the operators basically operate on, on a number of like that stack, right? So for example, you put X in, in the first stack memory, and then you basically can Score it, square it for example by 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 saying duplicate right so you're not gonna you're not gonna multiply there's no such thing called multiply like this type of operators you have to have a different operator that's kind of duplicates and then after duplicates the result getter is something else right so it is an instruction you have to write or you have to think your smart contract as a set of instructions not as a set of functions not as a set of things but you really have to think how am i going to execute in a stack so not in a heap memory where i allocate you know, some kind of memory uh, location and also that allocation is for example in, a, in in python handled by allocating really big space and then just dynamically um al, you know reallocating and kind of freeing the space so this is the most important part is that you cannot think in the same way you have to really break it down as a set of logical operations and with operators given okay so it's that that's what will make it much harder you're not going to write like a function and, and this and does that and does this but in a sense you must break it down your idea in the form of operations and in a form of like how am i going to put so what does that mean i will check for example this user is allowed right so this user is allowed cannot be checked like you know whatever is allowed there's no such thing you must write it as a form of like okay if this user and uh, is in a, some for example if, uh, let's say it, it, it's a smart contract that will clear the operation if this user part of the allowed one or if this user you know is the request coming within a certain block 
for example, and then you kind of go and check. But then to check it even, you can't just go and get everything and then operate, but in one stack, you would probably have the address and the, the time. In the other, it's the request time. And then you just probably add an operation, which is called greater or equal, you know, like kind of less than, and then you do that operation. And then you, you would do, if there are two of such operations, you would use the end operator, for example, to equate them. Because ultimately, as you might know, the smart contract finishes with the only thing it's, it knows, a smart contract ultimately is either true or false. Basically, it's either one or zero. So ultimately, the entire thing will just be either zero or one, right? And that's what, if it is one, then done. That means done means whatever inside has been finished. If it's not everything else that has been operated is rolled back, no state change happens. So in a way that that's how you control. Internally, of course, in that operation, you can also open, do some kind of transaction. If something happens inside that, you know, basically you can. Um, so some, some that's really how it, how it does. So it's just basically to give you an idea, like if you're thinking the smart contract, it's it's how that's written. Um, so at least in the next one, for the next web three, you should start thinking and reading about instruction set language and in particular algorand, just check it out, how you would write a very simple uh, smart contract. Great, I think we have taken enough time with this, but is there any outstanding question just before, I think we are following up we are going to close this recording and then we are following up with the description of the challenge. Anyone has any 